Hello, today we're going to make a design for the Christmas table centre and we're going to be making a foam free design. So we're doing something a little bit different today. So we're going to need a container to put it in and I've got a selection of containers here we can use. We're looking for something that's low and straight sided. So I'm going to be using something like this. This is a birch bark container with a low side to it. And this one's actually got a center in it. So I can actually pop a candle if I want into the middle. Or if you have a whole circle without the, the center out of it, you can do it the same way. Pop your circle, pop your candle in the middle. Just don't forget to put it in there at the beginning. Or you can use something like this zinc container here. Again, nice straight sides because we're going to be fixing cones onto the side of this. Um, a little bit more narrow, something different. Or you could use, if you've got it, a glass cylinder. So one of those really short, wide cylinders with straight sides. That's the important bit for fixing your cones on. Now, you might say, I haven't got anything like that. Well, there's no excuse. Out into the cupboard and have a look for a biscuit tin because they're great. The sides of these are just about the right height for this kind of design. And they're perfect because they don't actually leaves any water. We don't have to worry about making these waterproof because they are already. They're going to be absolutely fine for this. The only problem you might find is that they're not particularly pretty around the outside. Now this one happens to have a lovely tartan theme to it, so it's perfect for Christmas. So when we stick our fur cones onto the outside, it doesn't matter if some of this shows through. But it may be that the one you're going to use is a completely different colour. It's not the, the theme you're going to use and you want it to look different. So we need to think about what we can use to cover it up. So I've got some ideas here. One of the things that I think a lot of us have bought at national shows over the years is this felt ribbon. And we bought it and thought, oh yes, I'll use that but actually never used it. I've got a whole roll of this sitting in my workshop waiting to be used. And I thought, actually, this is ideal for covering over. So what I've done, because this ribbon is a little bit wide and the temptation is at that point, we're gonna glue this on, the temptation is to wrap it over and put it onto the inside of your container here. Now, that won't work because obviously we're using water in here and the wool will soak that up and it'll wick all the water out and you'll find a very soggy table afterwards. So what I've done is I've made it narrower. So it's just the right height to go along the edge of the container here. And actually I've allowed a little tiny bit extra because the top of this um, biscuit tin here the top of the biscuit tin here is white and so it might just stand out a little bit. So I've left a tiny bit more so I can run some glue along the top there and just tuck that over so it doesn't go right over into the water, but it'll just hide that hard line of that. Now there's other things you can use. It doesn't have to be the wool. You could have, this is what they call a mistral ribbon, which is a synthetic ribbon, but it's got a lovely um, sort of light look to it. It's more delicate. It gives you something more um, ethereal to use. And I actually tend to use this folded over twice. So it gives you a slightly thicker covering. And you can see that looks really nice as well as a covering. Very easy to use. And you can use any ribbon. A nice hessian ribbon would be good for something Christmassy like that. It'll work really well. Or if you've got some birch bark, some of us have got bits of birch bark tucked away in the, in the loft. And that's really nice for covering. So you get a very natural covering on it and just glue it around the container. So that works really well as well. Now, you've got no excuse. If you haven't got that, I bet you've got some wool at home and we can do wool. We can run wool around the whole thing. Just glue it to the bottom of your tin, a little bit of cold glue, and then just run it round. And it takes a little bit of time to get this right. 
just glue it around. The hardest bit is doing this first bit where you have the seam on the, on the biscuit tin. Run it round and then whiz it round and round and round. A little bit of double-sided sticky tape on here will just stop those bits of wool moving so it holds them in place. And if you haven't got double-sided sticky at home, have some ordinary sellotape and roll it. You know how you normally trying to stick it to something and it sticks to itself? Roll it so you've got the sticky side out and actually it creates your own homemade double-sided sticky. So you can wrap that right around the container and cover it up. And wool-wise, this is a really nice kind of wool. This has quite a sheen to it. So it gives you a lovely bright feel, particularly when you're in the winter, you want that sort of some things that reflect light back to you and that makes it all feel much brighter and richer. So look for wools with a bit of sheen to them. They're really nice for this kind of work. So I'm going to use this type of container and you can see that I've actually already got my mechanics in it. I've got some copper mesh here, which is really nice to use for mechanics. You could just as easily use a, a chicken wire. If you use the 12 inch wide rolls of chicken wire, they're not too wide and have a two inch gauge. They're very good for this kind of work. And all you're going to do, I've got a piece here, is just take your wire and roll it into a sausage. So you're just rolling it into a, a round roll to start with and use the little ends to just fix it to itself. So it just holds itself in place. So first of all, create that round sausage. And then we're going to squeeze the sausage down so it becomes an oval. And what we're trying to do is create two layers that the stems will come through one and into the other and having two pieces holding it make it sit much more firmly. So now we're going to tease this bottom piece up so that we go into a kidney shaped section on it. So we just move the middle up and it becomes a kidney shaped section. You can see you've just got that shape. You're coming round the top, up in and round. And then you're just gonna ease that into the round shape of your container. Or if you've got a square container or a, a rectangular one, just make it into the shape that you're going to use and slowly squeeze it round until you can tuck it in here. And making that kidney shape puts some tension on your wire. So it means that it sits without having to be tied in or taped in. This is really firmly into the container. So it's very easy to get it in there and working. Now, it may be that you don't have any of these kind of wires. So there are other things that you can use. So one of them is good old aluminium wire. We've all got some of this rolling around. You might be lucky and you might have brand new rolls of it, but I've got this, which is some wire I've used for a different, different design. And I've unwound it at the end and rolled it back into a ball because I thought I'm going to use this for something one day. And actually what you can do with this is roll it. You just make, again, a long roll of it, a big coil. Um, it's quite useful if you've got something you can wrap it round. Candles are quite good to wrap it round because you can wrap it round and then slide it off the candle. So you're just creating this long, sort of, it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. You've got a lovely tangled coil. And actually this we're going to slot into our container. So if I go back to our zinc one here. You can pop it into the container and just squeeze it around. It's the lovely thing with using aluminium wire. That you can move it, you can get it to fit in perfectly. And it does the same job as the mesh. The great advantage with doing it with this is that you haven't got any sharp ends. So if you're using a container that's lined with plastic, the mesh or the chicken wire can sometimes make a hole in it and you'll end up with a leakage happening. This won't do it because it's much softer. So it doesn't give you the same problems with it. Out of there. If you haven't got any of that, you can always use moss. So this is reindeer moss. You can use ordinary garden moss out of the garden and just tuck it in, have it relatively loose so that you'll be able to get the stems in. Um, but that's a really easy way. It holds a nice bit of moisture in it as well. So it's a good way of supporting flowers in that. The other thing you can do is go very um, contemporary with it. So I've got some acrylic tubes here. They're lovely to use, very easy. They're quite, quite 
reasonable to buy so they're not too bad to put lots in you generally buy them in a bag of a hundred and if you're going very contemporary you can literally just take a group of those and tuck them in really tightly into your container so that you see the container and the um, tubes standing up above the container so you've got this very contemporary feel particularly using this zinc container you've got the zinc then the tubes and then you'll have your plant material on top so it gives you a completely different look again this looks great if you combine it with the birch bark as well so you've got the birch and the glassy looking effect of it so it's a completely different way of doing it if you find that they're not fitting quite, you've got a few gaps in between, so they're a little bit wobbly, you can cut the odd stem from the bottom of some of your plant material and tuck it in between and wedge it and use it as a little wedge just to hold those, those tubes in place. So, we've done the hard bit, we've got our mechanics ready and we're ready to have some fun now. So this is where we start to use our cones. Now, normally for Christmas we use the typical pine cones that we find all over the seashore. There's lots of them around in, in maritime areas. But I'm going to use something different. I've got these cones here, which I believe are spruce cones, and I've had them for quite a long time. I think one of the things that flower rangers tend to do is they gather things. And I, one of my favourite things to do is I go for afternoon tea in one of those country house hotels. And the beauty of that is once you've had your afternoon tea, you can then walk off the calories by wandering around the grounds and always make sure you've got very large pockets and a big handbag because they have all these wonderful trees around that you can just gather a few bits and pieces as you walk and you end up, you come home with pockets full of lovely bits and pieces. So these are the cones I'm going to use. They've got a little bit of the old stem on the bottom of them still. So actually I'm gonna remove that so that we get a nice neat bottom to it. So we end up with a, a nice clean piece there. And I'm going to use a hot glue gun for this. And I'm using a gas one because I like gas glue guns. I don't get tangled up on all the cables. I find them so much easier. And I'm going to take my container here because I've got the birch bark. I'm not worried about having to hide it at all. And I'm going to get my glue gun and just glue along the side of the cone. Now there's a bit of a knack to this. When you're working with hot glue, it does tend to, if you, if you don't have enough around the plant material, it can pop off. So I tend to hold it so that the glue goes down into the cone because it, it then wraps itself around the scales, then turn it the opposite way around so it starts to come back towards you and then glue it onto my container. Now my tip for getting your cone in the right place is actually to glue with your container flat because then you can make sure the bottom of the cone is sitting flat on the table. Otherwise, what tends to happen is that you tend to put it a little bit too low and it lifts the container off the ground. So doing it this way, you tend to get it in the right place. So you can see there, I've got my cone ready to go. Hold it until it's properly dry and then you, you make sure it's in the right place. And then just keep going with the cones. Got another one here. Now, don't worry about what height they are. They can all be different heights. Having a bit of variation in them is, is really nice to have that. So I'll pop my glue on again, let it run into the cone, and then bring it back round from the cone. Tuck it next to the next one. And I try to tuck these in quite tight together so that they interlock a little bit. That helps you get them straight and you get nice covering so you really don't see any of the container when you're done. And you just keep adding them. Now, if you've got other kinds of cones, you can use those as well. This is another kind. Um, I don't know what the tree was, just another one that I've collected. But you can see when you compare it to the ones I'm using, it's a darker color. And I find this works really well if you're working somewhere where it's a little bit more antique, if you've got lots of old oak and things like that, this sits really well in amongst those kind of things. It's a little bit darker, a little bit richer to use. If you've got a larger container, then you can scale up your cones. So you've got a larger one, so bigger container, bigger cone, you get more dramatic impact from it. You could run two cones on top of one another, but it doesn't look quite the same. Scaling the size of cone up works really well. And there are lots of lovely big cones you could use for this. So I'm just gonna carry on adding. Now, 
You may be saying, well, I haven't got a glue gun at home. Well, that's okay. You can use the cold glue. So cold glue works really well for this. It's a little bit slower, so you've got to be a little bit more patient with this. Pop some glue on the cone and also a little bit on the container and then leave it. Let it go tacky. What most people try and do is stick it on straight away and they go, well, it's not sticking, this doesn't work. This glue works really well. You've just got to be patient with it and let it get tacky so you're, you actually get a really good fix and then you can start working. So glue a few, then go back to the first one you did and start sticking. And you'll find if you work like that, you get a good, good glue from them. And they once they're on, they hold really well because the cold glue has more flexibility to it. So it means that if this gets knocked or bent or anything happens with the, the, with the hot glue, sometimes they can pop off. Um, whereas with the cold glue, it flexes with them and they stay on really well. So if it's, if it's something you're gonna keep for a lot of years, then I probably use the cold glue. It'll take you longer, but it's worth doing it. Someone may be saying now, I haven't got any glue. I can't do that. Don't give up. We can always find a way for you to fix them on. Um, and what I'd do is I'd pop them onto the, onto the container and I'd actually wrap around them maybe with some wire or some raffia or in this case I've got some wool that we can bind around the outside to hold them in place. So there's, there's always a way you can find. If something you may not have at home, don't worry, think about it. We've got a different way of fixing it on for you. So these, I'm going to pop my last one on here. You'll be very glad to know I'm not going to make you watch me gluing all the cones on. So let the glue go in, then let it drop back again. Pop it onto the container. And you can see they're starting to come around and cover the container really nicely. One of the things I like about this cone in particular is that it isn't quite as purely Christmas as the pine cones are. It's one of those funny things Pine cones and holly berries are very much Christmas. Once you hit January, you really don't want to see them. Whereas with these cones, they feel more natural, a little bit more relaxed perhaps. And actually it means that you can change this design to suit different, different seasons. You could make this for the autumn, you could make it for the spring. You could use little daffodils and snowdrops and all sorts of things. When you see the design later, you'll see how you can pop different things into it. But that's the beginning of covering our container there. So we started covering our container and I've cheated slightly because I thought I'm not going to make you sit through all of that. So I've, here's one I covered earlier, that famous phrase. But you can see I've worked my way around the whole of the container and I've got all the cones. They're different heights so they undulate slightly as you go around the container. In this one I've used chicken wire. So I've got my chicken wire base already in there and I started putting some of the plant material in. So what have I got in there yet? I've got some variegated box, which I use a lot. I find it's a really useful foliage to use. Um, it's dainty, it's delicate, it's got a bit of color in it so it doesn't look dull. Um, and I find it's, it's got all sorts of uses because you get long shoots and short shoots. So you can use it for lots of different things. So I can pop some more bits in there and I'm literally just cutting them very short and tucking them in between the chicken wire and you'll find when you first start they might be a bit wobbly but persevere and as you put more in they start to interlock a little bit and they start to fill the space. I've also got some euonymus in there. So this is the little euonymus microphyllus which has very tiny foliage, which is lovely for dainty small work. And I've got both the green version that I've got here. I've also got some variegated ones, and that's really nice to use. Because it's we're really getting into all the serious evergreens that we want to use in here. I've got some myrtle. And this myrtle has got some lovely berries on it as well, which give you a little bit of movement in the design. As, you, as the wind catches it, you get that little wobble of the berries. So they're really nice to just tuck over the edges. So they just hang over and give you some movement there. Myrtle's always good for the winter and it's a nice traditional thing to use. You can of course use holly berries, anything like that. There's so many things in the evergreens that you can use. I've got little bits of yew, 
So nice to cut the tips from the U to pop in there. Got a little bit of sedum from the rockery. So just little rockery plants, brilliant for this. Nice bit of evergreen. A little bit of jasmine. So it's semi evergreen. So if you're in a sheltered spot, you'll be able to use that. I think Christmas is all about scent as well. This is some lovely rosemary. So you've got, I tend to use things like this around the edges of a design. So that if people just brush the edge of a design, you get that little bit of scent comes out from it, which really helps make it special. I've got some helianthemum, the little rock roses. And this lovely dainty little thing is a Veronica, Veronica Georgia Blue. Flowers in the spring with lovely, brilliant blue flowers, but actually it holds its foliage all year. So it means you've got some cover. It, it sort of tumbles over the edge of walls. So it's really good for that. Then because I love that smell of flowers, of flowers and plants and foliage again, got some mint and a little bit of variegated mint there. The pineapple mint, which is really nice. That freshness of it, particularly in winter, if you you get a little bit of mint going, so you've got some fresh mint for the winter. It's really lovely, particularly for Christmas dinner. If you're having some, some boiled potatoes, perhaps instead of the roast, really lovely. I've also got some ordinary fern. This is, this is really standard, normal garden fern. And I've just taken one of the side leaflets off. And they're really nice because they give you a bit of movement in the design. So you can let them run through and give you a bit of rhythm, which is always nice for something like this. I'll just pop that there. Another bit over here. So they're just weaving their way through. Now, I want to use a candle in this. So I want to put that in at this stage so I can see what it's going to look like. So I've got this lovely rustic green candle. Not too bright. I want this to feel relatively natural. So I'm using one of these with this um, sort of special finish on them, which looks just more gentle, perhaps, than some of the bright, shiny candles. And I was thinking about this, you could adjust this design for different times of the year. And I was thinking that maybe if you're in the autumn, you could make use of some of the fabulous colours that you get in the autumn. Here we've got a lovely aubergine coloured candle that you could pop in it. And we've got some different plant material here. We've got lovely black elder, we've got gorgeous calicarpa berries, beautiful heuchera with pink veining on them, and a little bit of silver spirea foliage. So actually, those work really well to give you something very different for a different time of year. So remember, your candle choice makes a big difference to how this design will finish in the end. And if you do worry about candles, don't worry, you can always use an electric candle, one of these little battery operated ones, really good in here. You can go a little bit lower with them because you don't have to worry about the flame catching any of the plant material. So you can actually go for a shorter candle. Whereas if I'm using a real candle, I tend to go a little bit taller so that although I'd never leave it unattended, it just means I don't have to worry quite so much about whether it's burnt down to the, the foliage yet. So we're there, we've got our basic foliage in. Now we're going to add a little bit of Christmas to it. And I've started adding some of these cones. This again is another little cone that I found on my travels, coming with a stem on it. And actually, I've cheated slightly at this point. I've added a bit of scent to this. I've got some, this is called a winter warmer. It's a natural oil, so it's, it's proper oils. It's nothing, nothing manufactured. I think it's, it's Christmas in a bottle. It smells gorgeous. It's oranges and cinnamon and spices, Christmas pudding, all those things. And when I got some cones, I've had them for probably a couple of years now. So they're nice and dry. They've been inside and I can just drop a little drop of the oil onto the top of the cone there and it will soak up really well. And when it's sitting in a warm room, that smell really comes out from it. So you've got that gorgeous aroma of Christmas. So don't, don't forget smell as well as the look of things. So I've got some more of those cones here, which I'm going to pop in. Put them across here. So I'm going to cut them relatively short and I'm going to pop them in amongst the foliage. And they bring that brown color of the cones around the outside into the main part of the design. So we're just running them around 
in the different places here. With some at the front there. And a couple of little ones. And this is the part of making a design that I really enjoy. I, I quite like spending time on designs and, and not rushing to finish anything. I think we've all got a little bit more time to enjoy things now. Enjoy that moment of creating something. You're not under pressure at all. You're not a show. You haven't got to get done before the judging starts. You can just enjoy that process of being creative, trying different things, seeing what you've got and how it works. So you can really have a play with things like this. I'm glad to use these. I've had them for a while, didn't know what to use them in. So this is perfect for them. It just carries that color through. And I love the way that color sits with the color of the candle. I think they sit really nicely together. Now I'm going to add a little bit of fresh plant material. So I've got some Kalanchoe here, which is something you don't often think to use. Now I've got it as cut flower, but actually you could use it from a house plant. So you find a lot of the supermarkets have really amazing value house plants. And this is a lovely one because you can cut the flowers off it. It will come back and flower again. And actually these flowers last for ages. They're so good. They'll last for weeks and weeks. So literally I'm just going to chop those off short. Take any of the foliage that will be under the water out and just tuck them in. That one's a little bit long. We're going nice and short with these. Take that nice big one from the middle there. And you can see it's just adding that little bit of color in there and brightening things up. We're starting to feel a bit Christmassy now. Tuck that in there. There we go. And I'm going to turn. It's quite funny because the candle doesn't move because it, it sits in the middle of the container. And one note, if you're using this on a table or something that's precious to you, put something underneath just in case any of the wax does come down the side of the stems, at the side of the candle. So just look after it, make sure you're not going to have wax on your table. We don't want you to ruin the baronial table. So just pop those in there and just keep as you work turning this container so you're able to get the color in all around because you tend to work towards yourself so as you turn it you see you get a slightly different view and when you're working on something that's going to be on your on your Christmas table it's important that everyone sees a pretty side of it they get something to enjoy so I'm just tucking those in there I'm also going to treat myself to a few roses so I've got a little spray rose here which I really like I think they're lovely for Christmas um, I also like the fact that you can get away with it if it gets a bit hot inside, which it does tend to do at Christmas. Things get a little bit warm and they may get a little bit frazzled. But with these spray roses, they tend to just dry in position. So I don't worry too much about them. Whereas if you had normal roses, actually they'd be drooping all over the place. So you don't really want that. So I'm just going to tuck those around the design here. I'm going to squeeze those in. Have some a little bit taller, some a little bit lower. They're lovely up against the cones as well. So you get that contrast between the silky petals of the roses and the, the dark, the cragginess of, of the cones. Here we go, I'll pop a few more in. Again, I'm gonna turn my work so I can see what I'm doing. And I've got a bare bit here, so I need to pop some roses in here. And they're lovely to use. Now, of course, I'm known for liking Christmas. I am really bad at this. Um, in our household, Christmas starts on um, August bank holiday weekend. That is the signal for Christmas to begin. That's the moment when the Christmas tree can actually come out again. So I can't do something like this. I know it's quite natural at the moment, but actually I want a bit of Christmas bling in this. I do enjoy it. It's the one time of the year when we can get away with glitter and sparkle. So I am going to use it. I've got a little selection here of things that we can use. So I've got some lovely shiny berries here. So these I'd probably use in pairs. So they're little... Now these are, these are the kind that are made on a little polystyrene bauble. So it's very important with these, you don't get them wet because they, they burst, you get popping berries. So I just sit them in pairs with two of them together, 
cut them to the length you want, just wrap the wires around one another, and these are very reasonable to pick up. You sometimes find if you buy supermarket flowers, you get these tucked in amongst them at Christmas, which is really nice, so it's a bonus. And we're just gonna pop those in there. So they give you a little bit of, of bright, shiny, proper Merry Christmasness. I'm just gonna make them nice and short and tuck them in. And I'm popping them in a little bit lower than the flowers because they're shiny. We don't want them to be too eye-catching. So we want the flowers to be center stage. These are just playing a bit of a supporting role. So we're gonna wrap them round so that they stay together, cut them short. I would also say never use your cutting, your flower cutting scissors for cutting wire like that. It's a very bad thing to do. It's one of my worst habits I do. Um, I've also got some little cones. So these are little glitter cones. So I've got them in red and green. So I'm going to have a look and see which one I prefer. So we've got the little shiny green and the shiny red. I think I prefer the green. I think they keep it nice and fresh. I think the red takes it a little bit too red. What do you think? Mm, I think I'm going with the green. So again, I'm going to do them in pairs, just wrap them around one another, snip off the ends and tuck them in. Just like that. And it gives you a little bit of extra, extra pizzazz for Christmas. Round again. And tuck them in. Now I've got some other things that I can use. I've got some berries, I've got some frosty berries, which I rather like. I think they give you a slightly different look again. Um, whereas the shiny berries give you something, you know, very eye-catching. Frosty berries have this lovely sugar-like coating on them. And I think they're lovely and soft and, and they, they make it all a little bit more magical, a little bit like a frosty morning. So I really like these. And these are the kind of thing I just tuck in individually and cut them short. Just pop them in amongst so we get that little frosty feel in there, which is nice to have. You can, of course, use ordinary baubles. They're lovely for this. Um, I've got some nice, either the matte baubles or some shiny ones, doesn't matter, whichever one you prefer. Um, I like having a mixture of both because I think they work very well when you have two different kinds in there. So it gives you sort of highlights and lowlights in a design. But actually I'm gonna treat myself because I decided I saw this little box of baubles in a shop last Christmas and I thought, aren't they adorable? I love small baubles in these because I'm a bit of a, Christmas tree fan, as you, as you realize. Um, and one of the things you need for the top of your Christmas tree is some smaller baubles. So I've always got my eye open for these. And I thought, I love these little stars. And I thought they're just what I need in here. And I'm literally just gonna tuck them in around the design. Got a few of them. We've got some shiny ones, some matte ones. So it gives you a different look in here. I'm gonna tuck them around. I'm gonna turn the design. So you can see it coming round. I'm just nestling them in amongst. I'm going to pop, try to put a matte one, then a shiny one. So you get that contrast between them. Pop another shiny one over here. I'm going to just fill those in. And then I'm going to tuck a few more of these green cones around. And we're almost there. So it's been a nice quiet afternoon of making. And it's, it, I think we've had a difficult year this year. And it's been one of the things that I think has been quite healing for people is to be able to just stop and spend a little bit of time making things and thinking about something other than all the troubles we've had. So we've been able to sit and be creative. And I think we're very lucky as flower rangers to be able to do that. So just tuck the last few of these frosty baubles in. And then I can imagine this sitting on my Christmas table, the candle burning merrily, the Christmas dinner appearing ready cooked for me, which is always nice. It's the one day of the year I get to not cook. So this is our design. I hope you like it. I think you can get out, get into the garden, 
go and forage and find bits and pieces, look for lots of dainty little foliage and flowers, and you can create your own Christmas table centre foam free.